Okay, here we go. Flat tires. Don't look like they're flat, but they're definitely flat. Uh, 1971 Volkswagen Beetle. It's been parked since 1981. So this thing's been parked for over 40 years. Uh, caught fire in the back, which you can see right there. I'm going to drag it up and uh, bring it to the garage. And then we'll go from there. We'll get it running again. If you don't have one of these little Milwaukee uh, air compressors, I'd highly suggest grabbing one. Perfect. All right. Welcome back to beautiful Utah. Let me tell you, it's a nice day out here, and we got a nice little project for you guys. Coming all the way from 1971, we got this 1971 Volkswagen Beetle that's been parked since, no joke, 1981. Let's take a look at it. All right, here we go. 1971 Volkswagen Beetle. Give you a quick little walk around. Hasn't been on the road since 1981. That's what the guy told me when I bought it. I kind of believe it. Um, it's been pretty much right here um, in my yard um, for the longest time. It was moved once when they, they built this house about eight years ago. And before that, it was at the guy's other house a farm here in the desert so they said that they took the tags off it and they put it off the road in 1981 because it had a fire so the engine compartment fire they parked it never messed with it they did however put some kind of decals on it which you can see like an eight there and a tiger tiger paw up there and i think an eight up here and the sun faded it differently in different spots that's why you can still see it but they used it as like a a high school display um, this door doesn't open but look at this no rust you won't find rust anywhere on this car I don't know if this patina is real or if they sanded that to make it look like that I'm not 100% sure on that um, I kind of think part of it's real but I do think they in a couple of spots they gave it a little rub to make it look that way but I could be wrong I'm not sure. Um, he replaced the bumper back in the day, the front bumper, because I guess they ran into their house when they were putting it in the garage. Um, full disclosure, I ended up putting new tires on it because I was moving around the backyard for well over a month, probably about six months actually. And it, running with flat tires, it was just pain in the butt. It was getting to be too difficult. But the interior, fairly decent. Um, dash, what's left of it is kind of cracked up pretty good. Got a hole in the dash. I don't know if they upgraded the radio back in the day. This is loose. Um, it's sitting in gear right now. None of the brakes work, obviously. But the interior is pretty decent. It says it has 22,000 miles on it. Again, I'm not sure if that's real or if it rolled over. I'd imagine. I mean, how often did you drive a bug? It was bought here in St. George, Utah, so it hasn't really left its town ever. So how often would you really drive it in a period of 10 years? So it's probably accurate, but needs new door cards on both sides. Um, it's not bad. You know, I don't know if this is factory or if somebody made those. I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up and see what a 71 Beetle looks like. Kind of cool. The back dash is busted out so or maybe it's supposed to be like that but you can't really see it but yeah this is it we'll show you uh we'll start with the front start with the trunk and we'll see what that does see what we can find in here that'll tell the whole story as they say so now i've looked in here so it's not my first time but they did wire it with wire nuts like you would a house so i know electrical is going to be a pretty good issue there's no fluid in there for the brake reservoir there's all kinds of parts up here a little fuel pump and uh distributor and distributor cap wires fuel filter i mean there's all kinds of stuff up here and i, I do think ow i just hit my head on the the hood but i do believe it's leaking gas because whatever's in there um, I could smell gas out of this right corner so 
I'm gonna have to investigate that. It's tarnished. It's not really good usable gas. Um, I'm not sure how to open up the filler lid yet, but we'll get there. Uh, only real damage in the front is the lens busted out. But surprisingly enough, the latches all work. A little whiskey dent down there. Bumpers are good. Headlights, the visors are all good. Uh, it's just, yeah, that lens, which shouldn't be too hard. Windshield's busted. Um, oh, there's been a cat walking on it. That's fitting. Um, I don't know what happened there, but I'm sure a windshield isn't that hard. But this door doesn't open. Oh, wait, maybe it does. No, I don't think it does. I thought I felt it move. Nope, it don't open. We'll figure that out. But no real damage on this side, other than the obvious paint job. Now, the wheels look good, but they're not. They're faded real bad and pitted. Um, and the guy said that they're rusty around the lip. So, but like I said, I had those tires put on. Now for the back, I don't even want to go there yet. Go back to this side. Both sides of these vents, that fire must have breathed through there because these are real brittle. And uh, as you can see, that running board right here is a dent and it just happens to match a size 12 shoe. I'm not saying that when we were towing it out of there, I tried to jump on that to uh, ride it versus walking. I won't say that. Anyway, so that's the only damage on this side is that running boards dented but i think i can fix it and like i said when we were pulling it out with the tractor i uh i'd try to jump on it well let's look here so this is all charred up it's pretty bad shape under here at first glance it don't look horrible but it's pretty bad i'm gonna have to start over with everything i'll probably get a different uh filter the air filter, I don't know if you can just replace that. That's an oil bath is what I'm assuming that is. And I'm not sure if you can just replace it or what, but that's a little suspicious how the distributor cap and rotor's off. Oh, well, actually the rotor's right there. Let's take a look at that. Oh, that's charred up. So that was, all these wires are just burnt. I don't know if you guys can see that, but this, it, it burnt a lot of stuff. That can't be right. So, safe to say it doesn't run. Um, what's goofy though, is there's no oil. Hell, there's a hair on it. I don't know if you can see that, but there's zero oil. But yet, ever since I moved it off the dirt, it's leaking oil. So, I don't really know. When we moved it, um, it was literally, the rear end was on the mud. And I'm thinking, that wherever the oil drain plug is, I think that that is leaking, I'm hoping, um, because once I moved it away from there, you could see where it would have been draining oil over the years. Um, but I'm thinking that that's, when I moved it, the dirt was kind of clogging it from leaking and now it's leaking again, but there's no oil in this. So obviously you don't want to start trying to start it, but all these wires are crispy. Like this wire is just, just toast. I don't know if you guys can make that out on the camera, but it's, pretty bad shape you can tell the carburetor has been on fire there's no fuel line so I'm assuming that's what started on fire I guess I don't know I'm, I could be wrong on that too but one would kind of guess that this is the hot spot even though I guess over there's I don't know it definitely was exciting for whoever the driver was I promise you that it was it got exciting quick so but it didn't mess up the lenses in the rear Oh, I guess that one's busted, but that might not have been from there. This, I don't know what happened there either, but we're gonna, we're gonna get it going. Okay, so I went back over here and I did get this to open. I put both hands on it because I'm a wimp and see how it pops open like that? So something's obviously wrong and I can't barely, I mean, this is taking everything I have to open that so it won't move like that's crazy so these hinges are just seized I'm not sure what's going on with that so this 
This is my first time actually looking inside the car from this side, so. Oh, oh I'll bet that. Yep. That's how you open up that. So I don't know what all these levers do. There's like, that might be how you get rid of the seatbelt, unhook the seatbelt, but then there's other levers down there. So I'm not really sure. These don't work, the seats don't, which is fitting for this car. But headliner's decent. I mean, all in all, not bad for what I, what I paid for this car. So let's get into that. I'm gonna get out of the sun. So, what did I pay for this car, you guys are wondering? Nothing. I got it with the house and they didn't wanna take it. So I was kinda joking around when I bought this house. We've lived here for, what, nine months now? Almost a year, something like that. And they had this bug in the backyard, which I'll show you here in a second. And uh, it sat there since they built this house. You know, they brought it here and they parked it in the backyard and they just left it. So. When they bought, when they were showing me the house, I was joking with the guy that owned it, and I'm like, "Does it come with the Beetle?" And he goes, "Yeah, if you want it, I got a title for it." So yeah, so I was like, "Heck yeah!" So they actually wrote it in the contract that the car comes with the deal. So that was kind of neat, kind of funny. But I either spent the most money on a Beetle ever and got a free house, or I got bought the house and got a free Beetle. So you tell me which one I did. But anywho. I had to end up moving it. Um, I moved it across the yard with flat tires and I had to build a, build a carport so that's why I ended up moving that. So I moved that for a carport and then I built a shed where that was parked. So anyway, it's it's been here for a hot minute and then before that it's probably spent 30 years on their farm but hasn't been on the road running since 1981. They've just been kind of dragging it around. I kind of him and his wife were talking about it and they were trying to figure out he thinks that the house had caught on fire or not the house geez that the bug had caught on fire twice he thinks that he got it running again in the mid 90s and uh it caught on fire a second time but it never never left the yard like they just got it running walked away from it caught on fire i don't know but they couldn't they couldn't remember if it was the original time it caught on fire or the second time so i'm not really sure so anyway, this is the beetle, and this is what we're going to build it up. I'm not going to do anything with the paint right away. I don't really have any, uh, you know, suggestions or anything for that yet. I'm going to kind of leave it retro-y, uh, but I do want to get it running. So I, I'm going to try to get it running with the motor in first, but if I can't get it running with the motor in, then we'll pull the engine, we'll rework the whole thing, figure it out, and put it back in. Uh, but let's go take a... Better look at the driver's seat, the interior, because I did notice there was a couple things missing. Um, so we'll look at that. But yeah, even those vents, so I'm imagining fire come right out of those vents. How rad would that be? That'd be a trip. But even all the chrome moldings, like they're all there. So, like I said, I don't know if he custom made these brackets or if that's how it was for a Volkswagen. I don't know what that little switch is. I don't know if anything works because I don't even know where the battery compartment is. This is something. Anyway, we I did find the key. They didn't know where the key was, but it was under the driver's seat. So I have that. The carpet's kind of falling apart. Um, but there's no turn signal. It's busted off. So have to fix that. And I'd imagine he said his kids used to play in this. So... Um, I'd imagine they broke it off on accident while playing in here. I had this open before. There it is. So, I mean, to give you some context, this was going to be... <laughs> this is going to be the shifter. But, yeah. Interesting. But it has the registration in there. and I don't want to show that on camera. But, you know, this stuff's not... Ooh, that's nasty. But, I mean, they're, these are, like, deflated. There's, like, nothing in it. That's weird, but yeah, dash doesn't look too cut up. I'll probably put a radio in here just because I would have preferred it to be left alone. However, it was stock. I'm not sure what these are. Them might have been the original radio knobs. 
I don't know, before I make up my mind on that, I'm going to have to see what was originally in here, but I don't think these were original. For some reason, that just looks weird. So I'm guessing that wasn't original, so I'll have to look that up. But even sitting in here, I can smell like old gas. I can smell that pretty good. Um, so it's leaking out of the front gas tank somewhere. So before we get too far into this, we're going to have to probably just get a new tank. I'll probably order a new tank and put a brand new line all the way back to the engine. Um, this thing's got to be pretty basic. I don't know without looking it up, but I would imagine it has just a vent and that's about it. You know, I would, I think it's a mechanical pump on the engine, so I don't think it's much, but we might get, get it running on a, uh, gas can for right now. But yeah. Steering wheel's not original. I am on the market. If you guys know or know where one is or have one, I would be on the market for a original steering wheel. I think that would be cooler. But yeah. It's going to be quite the project, but I, I really think it'll be worth it in the end. I think it'll be pretty rad when it's done. Um, I'm pretty positive this blue is the original color. So it, um, down here in southern Utah, the sun just kills it kills the paint on every vehicle. Every classic vehicle, if it's original, the paint's ruined if it sat outside. Um, so 90% of them, the paint's just garbage unless it was a repaint. So I do believe that this is the original color. I don't know how to tell that, but I'm sure with the VIN number, maybe I could tell that. So, and this is an original. There's no way these are original. But... Anyway, the interior and motor, I want it to be back to a factory outside of the air cleaner. I'm going to get rid of the oil bath cooler, and we'll put just like a K&N or something on there just for, it'll be easier to deal with than that oil bath. Um, and then we will go from there, but we're not going to do anything performance or not like that. I want this just to be kind of a sleek, old survivor. Uh, the paint kind of sucks on the outside. Maybe one day I'll paint it, but I'd like to get it running and driving first. Um... Sitting in here, the clutch actually feels good. It's got a little spring in it. So I don't know if that's, I mean, look, I don't know if that's because there is a spring on it. Like I said, I don't know. But the brake, nothing, goes, just goes to the floor. So, well, it goes to that stop. It's got a, it's got a little stopper back there. But yeah, the brakes, no go, no good. But yeah, anyway, I know this is a boring video, but, uh, I'm going to get the my son out of the tractor, and we'll push this thing back in. It doesn't roll that easy, so I'm a little concerned with that as well. But we'll get it in, and we'll start working on the engine. So that's where we're at right now, and we'll see you in a minute when we get back in the garage. All right, we're back in the garage. I'll show you the setup we got going on, what we're working with. Got it jacked up. Lighting kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Definitely leaking gas in the front because you can smell it. I found out what the leaking on the um, the oil is. It's just this oil sump system. I went to the O'Reilly's, got some parts. So we're gonna try to tackle that first, because um, we can't get it to stop leaking. Then I'm gonna have to pull the pull the motor out. So I'm trying not to do that yet. So uh, it's a 10 millimeter. I already figured that out, so I could jump ahead. Let's uh, check it out and see what it. Uh, See what it entails. Okay. So. Actually, I'm going to. Oh, these are loose as all get out. Okay. Hey, I'm going to get a rag. This rag's already nasty. So we'll get a rag and we will take that sump off. I've never dealt with anything like this. So I'm not 100% sure what to expect. Um, this is my first Volkswagen, actually. I've never had any kind of VW, anything really. But this has been leaking for a hot minute though, because look at all that. I mean, this is, I'm trying to see where it was dripping from. I, Okay, so I guess 
I, hope, I wonder if I should get the oil drain. Can't be that much oil in it, though. Well, there's more than I thought. I'm going to get the bucket. The oil drain bucket. Okay, boy, that smells like gas in the oil too. I don't know how that's a, it's kind of a scary deal. Okay. Yuck. All right, well. let that drain there was a lot more oil in this thing than I thought the dipstick didn't register anything so that's that's definitely interesting alright I was trying not to turn the the light in my face and I wasn't trying to touch everything with the oily gloves but there's definitely a lot more oil in this thing than I thought I didn't think there was any because it didn't register on the dipstick so I'm gonna go ahead and drain this and I'll get back with you in a minute yeah there is a ton of oil that thing is still draining so I don't know I don't even know where it's coming from I'm not even sure how much oil that a VW bug holds so but it looks like it's dying down. I'm going to let this drain all the way. And we will assess the rest. But I hope I got the right sump. Because this is what it looks like. Sorry about the glare on the light. And then I got a gasket and some, uh, some crush rings. Some copper crush rings. So, Alright. Let's get cracking at this. Alright. It's pretty well done with the dripping I think anyway okay I was gonna go up and get gloves but it's fine okay that's different so those must just be studs in there that makes things more difficult I wonder if they're all studs or if just that one is for like a guide but why would it need a guide if the rest of them okay so that's off Heck, there ain't even a... I don't even think there's a gasket on here. Well, that's why it's leaking. That's... That's why it's leaking right there. That's bare metal. No gasket on either side. Oh yeah, there's a gas. There's one gasket on this, but according to what I have, there should be a gasket on each side. That's interesting. I know some of you are probably cringing that I'm wiping this off with a rag, but we're gonna let it drip dry. See what it does. Huh. Let's see if that Yeah, that's gonna fit right up in there. Yep, 
Yep. Yeah, that'll fit. It's some sort of spring pressure thing. Okay. Well, let's let that air dry a minute. And then, let's go look at our gaskets get cleaned up. It's definitely interesting. I've never had to deal with anything with that kind of setup. I've dealt with a lot of old cars before, but I've never, never dealt with that. So have any of you guys ever dealt with one of those sump setups? So if, if you have, let me know if I'm doing it right or wrong. I'm, I'm really not sure. Okay, we are going to attempt to put this on. So you got two different gaskets here. You got the oil sump here, or the strainer, I'm sorry. So we are gonna, we are gonna try to put this on correctly this time, since it was not done correctly before. And I'm gonna be honest, I could even be doing it wrong right now. So we're in this together, we will figure it out. Okay. So, I don't know what the deal is with that, but I'm going to put one of these screws on, because there's some sort of spring thing on there, so I'm not 100% sure what the deal is with the spring, but I'm going to start, i got a copper washer. And one of the little nuts. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So at least it's up there and it's lined up. So one nut. One copper washer. Okay. Now I'm going to give this a little bit of love. There it is. There it is. All right. Now, what am I doing? See, I'm already getting ahead of myself. Screwing it all up. Okay. See? I'm glad whoever just said that and uh, whoever's watching this video just said, Hey, dummy, you forgot to put the lid back on in the other gasket. You would be correct. So, thanks for the heads up on that. We will get rid of the old something or other. We will wipe this bad boy down. Boy, that is some nasty oil. Any whichever way, we will be doing an oil change promptly after we get this bad girl running okay now what I was saying is I'm gonna go ahead and put one of those crush washers on along with a nut another crush washer with the nut We will finger blast that. <laughs> okay, let's get all my little washers out of here. They even gave me a washer for that center nut, which we are going to change that because we have it. So we might as well. I don't know why this oil smells like gas though. I don't, if any of you guys know anything about these VWs, let me know. I'm definitely curious if I'm doing this right. I really think I'm going to get it running though. I don't know why, but 
I've watched a couple videos, so I'm uh, YouTube certified, but I've watched a couple videos of these guys doing these, and they look like fairly simple motors. They don't look like there's a lot going on with them, but I suppose that's when mistakes are made, is when you think it's simple. So, goodness, what an oily mess. Stuff is just like slime. Okay. We'll finger them down. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, and then we're going to just do your typical star pattern. So, pick one. And I'm not going to go crazy. I'm just going to snug it for a second. Because I can see that cinching up. I don't know if you guys can. So. And this is a 10 millimeter. I don't know if I said that. So. You'll be able to get at that with ease without going to the toolbox 10 times. trying to I'm sure there's a torque spec for these but we're using the old muscle memory so you don't want to bust anything okay so Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. Now. Try to dry up any of this excess. Okay. So I feel like I do have this, but I'm going to leave it alone for right this second. All right, so that's a good stopping point for today. I think we're close to an hour video, so I don't want to edit too much. I'm going to go get this uploaded right now, and then we'll be back again, hopefully tomorrow, with the wiring. So... I'm going to try to post every day until we get this thing running, so stick along for the ride and hope you guys enjoy this kind of content because i got like three more projects just like it outside. I've been kind of hoarding, stockpiling, so um, did the oil today, we'll do the electrical tomorrow, then I think we're going to tackle the gas problem, and then... I don't know, hopefully that'll make it run, and then we could do brakes and stuff, go for our first drive, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Today we hopefully solved the oil leaking problem. I am going to leave it jacked up, uh, just because I, I find it easier now. It's lifted up, I can do the wiring a little better. I got to go get some wire nuts and, no, <laughs> listen to me, wire nuts, some wire connectors, and we're going to do this a little bit better, but I mean that one wire that I was telling you was pretty fried. I barely touched it and it fell off, so I'm going to try to splice into this, I think, and just, I mean, all that's crusty, so we'll get some wire stuff together and we're going to tackle this tomorrow, and uh, hopefully see you there. Till next time, adios.